So the next thing we're going to do is to add 10 mils of sodium saturated sodium chloride solution to that. We're going to use sodium, aqueous sodium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, and water. But each time we add one of those, we have to go back and separate the layers each time. Um, so the first one we'll do is the um, saturated aqueous sodium chloride. Okay, I went ahead and measured out the substances we're going to be using uh, to do the washing with. So uh, remember we've got organic material inside the separatory funnel. So the first thing we're going to use to wash that with is uh, 10 mils of saturated sodium chloride. So I went ahead and had that measured here. I'm going to pour that in. And then each time that we do a washing, uh, you really need to stop her, shake, and vent. All right, we've washed that with our 10 milliliters of sodium chloride. A lot of time when people use sodium chloride, if there is anything that happens to be still clinging into the organic layer, the sodium chloride is really good to kind of pull it out. So we're going to let that sit a couple minutes just so we get the two defined layers. And then the next thing we're going to do is drain off that aqueous layer. Again, the organic shouldn't change. If it was on top here, it's going to be on top for the rest of the washings. We'll drain off the aqueous layer. Then we're going to use some sodium bicarbonate. And the reason we use the sodium bicarbonate, if there's any acid that's still trapped in the organic, we want to neutralize that. And the solution is cold. Um, it's probably best to err on the side of caution. When you mix acids and bases together, sometimes that generates heat. And we really don't want to undo anything we've already done with the presence of heat. Um, so we'll just, we have that chilled already. Let that sit just a, another minute or so so we get two well-defined layers and then we'll do another washing. So um, it's been enough time. We've got the layers that have separated. I am going to, now we're going to collect this. I've labeled it aqueous NaCl because that's the, the uh, material that we use for the washing. I'm going to lower this a little bit. And then we're going to drain off this layer into the aqueous sodium chloride flask. And take care, uh, we have such a small amount that we're uh, trying to remove, uh, and I'm using a small Erlenmeyer flask to do that. Typically, you, it's a good idea to collect in a flask, but you want to make sure that you don't turn it wide open because it can flash or spill. And again, I'm not going to throw any other flask away. I'm going to still keep this. And I'm going to keep this because we are going to do another wash later with another amount of aqueous sodium chloride. So I'll just combine all those fractions together. So now what we're going to do, we're going to add the sodium bicarbonate. And again, it, it's not unusual. If it's chilled, it, you may not see as many bubbles, but it's not unusual if, to see any bubbles. Like I saw a few there. The sodium bicarbonate, again, the only reason we do that is to neutralize any acid that still may be trapped. Remember, we, we removed the acidic layer, so there shouldn't have been many in, much in there to start with. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to swirl this without the stopper, just in case there's any gas formation for the mixing. I'll swirl that. And then I'm going to put the stopper on, and then I'll invert it and, and release the pressure. Then I'll shake it vigorously just to make sure that if there is any acid present, that it has combined with the sodium bicarbonate. And I'm going to go ahead and put the stopper on. Again, always make sure you just give that a turn. And then I'm just going to kind of turn it upside down, put a little bit of pressure. Just 
just a little bit of a spew. But again, I'm not expecting much because if we drain the acid off, there shouldn't be much in there. I think one more will be sufficient. All right, we're gonna put this back up. I'll let those layers separate again. And uh, if the organic was less dense than the aqueous, it's still the same. So the organic will be the top layer. The bottom layer we want to drain off. Let that sit a minute or so for separation to be complete. Layers look pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and collect the lower uh, layer that's in the separatory funnel which is contains the aqueous sodium bicarbonate. And again you certainly could go a little faster. I'm just a little bit nervous to make sure none of this is going to splash out. And sometimes it's not great to go extremely fast because sometimes this can't keep up. When you let it go, there may be some of this that's still lagging behind. So there is our aqueous sodium bicarbonate layer. So we're gonna uh, add water next. We'll do 10 milliliters of water. is sufficient. Remember, if you ever start opening the stopcock and nothing's draining, just check to make sure that you remove the stopper because that will pull its own vacuum and nothing will move out until you remove the stopper. Notice this is my aqueous, the water that I use, so I'm just uh, collecting it into a flask that's labeled water. And then we're going to add one more 10 milliliter uh, portion of sodium chloride. Again, sodium chloride is very useful. Um, it kind of draws out anything that could be trapped within that organic layer. So we're going to add the 10 mils of the sodium uh, chloride solution again. And then always give that swirl of the stopper. And then we'll just shake this. Just want to make sure we're getting all the aqueous in contact with that organic. And then we'll let those layers separate. Layers look good. Remember this was the sodium chloride, so I'm going to combine those layers together. And technically, anything that was aqueous, since I'm not using that later, uh, that later in the experiment, I could have combined all the aqueous washings. I just kind of like to keep them separate just in case I make a mistake somewhere, so it's easier to separate one thing than more than one. to do is to drain off the organic layer into the organic flask and what I'm going to do because there is a possibility depending on how good I was at separating the layers it's possible that there could be some water that's trapped in there so we're going to put this uh, the organic layer into the organic flask we're going to add some of the drying agent let it sit about 10-15 minutes and then we'll remove the drying agent Okay, 
And again, even though we're just draining this one substance, I'm not gonna turn it on full glass, again, because the mouth of my flask is a little on the small side. I'm gonna get the um, sodium sulfate, anhydrous sodium sulfate. And if you remember for the anhydrous sodium sulfate, we just add enough until there's no more clumping. So a little bit of clumping. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Perfect. Uh, there's some clumping, but the rest of it is moving um, freely. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna swirl it to make sure everything comes in contact with the drying agent. I'm gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes. And then we will filter, I'll use a cotton plug, we'll pipette this liquid to a cotton plug, uh, and then we'll be able to uh, determine how much of the material we recover. And it's also a good idea to stopper, because any most organic substances are volatile, so you could use a stopper. If you do use a stopper, just make sure it's clean. Uh, I just use it like to put some paper towel at the top of it. And just let that sit for a good 10 minutes and then we'll come back and take a look at it then. 